welcome to this showcase. In a shorter and less technical format, I want to demonstrate what you actually can do with Netty. So in this first showcase, I'm going to show you how to really get started with Netty. First of all, you want to customize your UI. So there is one option that you can turn on to enhance um, features like remembering list settings and breadcrumbs. I want to change the theme as well. Everything else looks good. So I'm just going to hit update. In order to the style sheet to get loaded, you need to refresh the page again. And now you see we already have a completely new view on things. If you go to another form, nothing is in the database yet, but you can see the breadcrumbs starting to appear up here. And as I keep using Netty, those breadcrumbs will be added to the top. Now, in the previous tutorial, I showed you how you can get your network discovered. So I'm going to do the same thing here manually. I'm just going to add an IP address. With that, we have some stuff in the database. I'm just going to add one IP address manually. It's the one of my switch here in the office. And as you can see, I discovered it. And if I go back to device list, we have something in here now. There is even my studio phone as well. So if I'm going to add columns, for example, services, and maybe the SNMP version, you can see those additional columns showing up here. And since I enabled optimize, here. If I go back to the list and do a show again, those columns are still in here. So I don't have to select it every time I go back here. And as you can see here, the breadcrumbs really started to fill up. So if I go back to profile, I can actually influence how many breadcrumbs I want to see with this general number of events um, figure. I can change it to five. To activate it, you need to log out and back in, which I just did now. And you can see I only have five breadcrumbs up here now. So let's go back to the device list. And you may have noticed those columns we had before disappeared because they're only valid for one session. So I need to do this again for this session, but it will stay as long as I'm logged in here. Now going to device status, you'll notice that there is a link on the serial number and if I click it, it takes you to the stock management. This part here allows you to really take care of your lifecycle management of devices. So I have the serial number filled in, the type and the location where it was discovered and I can just add it to the stock database. I can do this with every device or alternatively I can use a barcode scanner to read serial numbers or type in manually, of course, but this gets really boring after 100 devices or so. You can add type, location, if you have several places where you store devices. And of course, the vendor or the, the partner you bought the equipment from. You can add a warranty exp expiration date and add some comments. So let me just add a bogus device in, in the regular stock. As you can see, I've added it here and devices start popping up in, in this list. I can then create lists of certain criterions. And uh, if I'm in the list view here, you may have noticed I got an XLS export icon up here. So I can export it to an Excel spreadsheet, send it around or do whatever with it. If a device gets discovered again, which I can do very easily again here, I can add, for example, everything from the database, just to show you the difference. I didn't enter an IP address now, but it just picks up whatever is in the database and updates that again. Going back to stock, it found the switch again. It marked it as active. And if I click on it, it's, it says in the description it's been discovered as the device name with this IP address. And the same applies for modules discovered within devices as well. So you can really keep track of everything on your network. Now let me discover the switch again to show you what I mean. But this time I'm going to use the discovery protocol. 
and maybe add verb as output to it so you can see what's going on. Here we go. It's picking up a lot more than before. Yet another switch we haven't seen yet. And okay, now it's discovering my wireless controller, which takes a minute, but still should be done fairly soon. This is my ESX server. Discovering all the the VMs as modules as well. And last but not least, we have a little modular switch. It's a HP 5300, having quite some modules in it. And that's done. Um, we can go back to our well-known device list now. And we see we have quite a bunch of new devices in there. If I go to Report Asset, we have quite some assets in our database already, listed by boot image, as by model or description string. As you can see here, we have a classification of those modules. We have chassis, actual line cards, and transceivers. This is the whole inventory listed by device and class. And I can even filter on a certain device type and only get inventory on those device types. Of course, I only have one of those switches, so only one of them is in here just now. Now, to show you what I meant with the modules, I'm just going to pick any serial number here. Go back to stock. Add the serial number. Some module, that is. Add it. So we have the module here. And if I go back to, let's use device status for that. Going to the switch, have it rediscovered, just like that. Now once it's done, let's go back to stock. And we can see the module I entered before has become active since it was discovered in this device. Another way to handle your assets could be generating a list in device list, adding the panels so anybody who's looking at it will know what they look like. And then once you're happy with what you're seeing, you can use the print icon. Maybe highlight certain items by clicking on it. Double clicking removes the highlight again. And once you're done, you can simply click on the top left to print it or to send it as a PDF. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Bye now.